Hi, I'm Dr. Wilshire at Missouri Fertility. Welcome to our Ask the Expert series. Today, our guest is Dr. Erica Bove. Welcome to the show, Erica. Thanks, Dr. Wilshire. It's so great to be here. Erica is a board certified reproductive endocrinologist. Uh, she deals with uh, uh, many of the issues that surround fertility treatment and the things that go along with it. And today, we're going to hear her thoughts on a very common problem, and that is uh, being overweight. Uh, being overweight is something I've struggled with in my life. I want to let you know you're not alone. It's very, very common. 40, 50, 60 percent of our population is overweight, so uh, mm -hmm. it's nothing unique if that's a problem for you or an issue. Uh, unfortunately, being overweight uh, adversely affects fertility for a, a large number of women and men, and it's a very uh, vexing problem because there's no single one-size-fits-all uh, treatment yeah. for it. So I would love to hear your thoughts, Erica, on dealing with being overweight. Yeah. So, you know, and I have my own, you know, weight journey as well. So I think sometimes I believe in the notion of the wounded healer. I think that sometimes when we've been personally affected by something, it just really deepens the mm. way that we want to contribute and give back. So this is part of my giving back. Um, mm. You know, I was a competitive runner in, uh, in high school and didn't realize that I was mm. developing some pretty unhealthy patterns and then got to college and really realized I might need to leave if I didn't, you know, really kind of heal and, and, and get some healthier habits and patterns. And so mm. you know, since that time, I've been on a journey to, to heal and to understand my body and to, to really understand what I need. And, you know, as I, I went to med school to become a psychiatrist to cure the world of, of eating disorders, which was quite oh, ambitious. Oh, um, interesting. But then I got to psychiatry and realized I love, you know, I, I, I didn't like the pace. I love working with my hands. I loved OBGYN. I love women's health, et cetera. And I loved actionable problems. So I, I switched gears, um, but I think I still hold that near and dear. So that's just sort of a brief introduction. Um, you know, I, I think the hard part, part about carrying extra weight is that, you know, a lot of it is the genes that were dealt, and it's really hard to overcome genetics. And there also is an environmental component as well in terms of, like, the habits that we have and the exercise and the, you know, the things we put in our body, the different rate. It's not just calories in, calories out. There's a whole science. Right. Right. Um, there's a whole Preach science it. of Correct. ratios and, 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 you know, each person processes nutrients differently. And so I think it's really about understanding, you know, your body and what you need. And I think what's so hard about it, you know, we know that this affects fertility for sure. Um, but so many of us are not taught how to eat. <laughs> We're not taught ah, to trust our bodies. We're not right. taught to tune in. And so, you know, I think that, you know, what I love to do is help people understand, okay, what has been my relationship with food? What has been my weight journey? You know, weight and health are not the same. We do mm. know that in population-based studies, the people who carry extra weight don't get pregnant with the same efficiency. They have higher rates of loss, sometimes even higher rates of birth defects. So it's like, what can we do not just to get people pregnant, but to help them walk home from the hospital with a healthy baby nine to 10 months from now, right? That's the point. Um, and, you know, I think as we start to think about fertility, sometimes it really hits close to home. Like, wow, like maybe my relationship with food isn't the healthiest. Maybe I have a lot of body hatred that is really, you know, I don't just hate my body because I'm not getting pregnant. I hate my actual body and, the, and how I, when I look at the mirror and all those different things. Right. And so... I, I really think it's an opportunity to to say, okay, you know, I'm going to look at what I've been taught. I'm going to look at the beliefs I have about my body and, and all of this, and I'm going to learn a different way, which is hard. But I think that's that- That's hard because it starts with you before you can even remember that's anything. That's right. You're and eating. I know. And I mean, I, I huh? not to knock a drug addiction because I, I know yeah. that's really hard to overcome as well. But, you know, you can't just abstain from food. You got to figure out how to have a healthy you can't relationship abstain with from it. from food. Yeah. So, you know, what, what I've really come to is really understanding like the messages we have about our body and food and, and the unworthiness and, and all of the control, like all the things that are beneath the surface, because it's not just about this is the diet. And I hate that word, you know, the nutrition plan you right. need to, to lose the weight, to ovulate. to do, No, it's about how to 
relearn how to walk. I mean, it's like it's like you know the the uh, analogy I like to say is it's almost like somebody's paralyzed, and then how do you teach them how to walk again? Right? That's that's how drastic this is. Mm. But what happens is then we learn how to trust our bodies because our bodies have this amazing inner wisdom that we often ignore. Right? We have hunger signals that we've never tuned into. We have cravings, you know, as, especially as, as, I mean, as humans, but as women too, it's like, don't, don't, don't give into the cravings, you know, the, the body's evil, just like have your rules and live your life. But I think that in order to move forward on the fertility journey in a way that is sustainable and not just one fad diet after the other, yep. it, it has to become a new way of life, which is not just the behaviors of what you put in your body. But it's about, you know, how you feel after you eat, how you learn to trust your body, how you believe that you are actually a beautiful person, you know, inside and out to retrain the messages that have been learned over the years. And, you know, I think that, you know, as we think about the fertility journey, a lot of it is trusting the body and trusting the body to do what it needs to do. Okay, sure, with assistance from your REI, but we have to tune into that inner wisdom in the same way. And so, you know, as I think about, you know, okay, say somebody carries extra weight, you know, they start to examine their patterns. It's really about this holistic healing and new ways forward that is really going to bring about the best possible outcomes. Boy, <laughs> you know, it's uh, it happens to be mid January right now, and the crowds at the gym are already thinning out. You yeah. Know, the, the the new, you know. The new way on 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 January first, the resolutions. Mm, I know uh, they fade quickly, and and with weight, it is consistency and long term. Yep. Uh, you know, adherence or, or dedication, and, yeah. and uh, it's hard to do alone. Uh, when I lost uh, 130 pounds, my my big loss, I did it with my wife. We were we we did it together. I had wow. support. And you'd be amazed how people will sabotage you. They say they love you, and they but, but they order the pizza or the ice yeah. cream or whatnot. Yeah. And uh, um, boy, it's complicated. It's complicated. So uh, how you know you mentioned that uh, your first love may have been psychiatry. Where do you think counseling uh, comes in this? Is there much of a role for you? You see life coaches. You see services online. Uh, yeah. Obviously, you're, you, you're compassionate. Now, a lot of doctors don't have much time for this. Uh, uh, you know, where does counseling come in on this? Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, you have to fight, find your team, right? You have to find the right person for you. I, I think that there, you know, when I was in the beginning phases of my healing, I thankfully found an excellent counselor who had a very good understanding of like body image and uh, food and exercise and, yeah. and messages and perfectionism and all those things that kind of roll up into one. And I think that there are, and I saw a lot of bad people. I mean, I saw a lot of people who really did not know what they were talking about too. And it's a vulnerable time. So I think, you know, the, the most important thing is, is, you know, I do think that professional help is often very helpful in terms of the thought patterns and trusting the body and, and all of those things that even like there's like good endocrinology teams now, which focus on, you know, weight optimization on the fertility journey and also challenging the, you know, the, the mindset as well at the same time. Um, but I, I think that you really have to tune into the intuition to say, like, is this person who is, is this a person who's going to help me in my healing, you know, or do maybe they have some messages that are not going to serve me um, and, and really kind of tuning in that way. Like, I remember I saw a dietitian and she said something very insensitive and not helpful. And I, you know, I, I was a people pleaser way more so, mm, you know, 25 yeah. years ago. And I was like, you know what? Like, I don't think this is the person for me. I think I need to find somebody else. And I, I did. And so there's some of that, you know, there's some of that sort of tuning into the intuition to find who is actually going to serve you and your, your healing. But I will tell you, I remember I have one patient who she, you know, she came to me she had PCOS. She's had an she'd had an eating disorder her whole life, which again people often don't understand that people who carry extra weight often also have eating disorders, right? So I just yeah. want to put that out there. And carbohydrate addiction that nobody Absolutely. wants to talk about it. Yeah. Absolutely. And I remember she came to see me, and I got her hooked into some resources and said, you know, before we, you know, really try to get you pregnant, I'd love to try and you know sort of optimize your weight and your health as best as we can. And she was on board, and so. 
She got plugged in, three months later came, saw me crying, gave me a hug. And she said to me, I don't care if I ever get pregnant because what's happened in the last three months has changed my whole life. And I actually love myself. I, I see myself so differently. And again, I hope I get pregnant in the future, but it doesn't matter. Our paths were supposed to cross for this reason so that I could start this journey. And I just thought like, wow, you know, we carry so much with us. So much of this is the mind-body connection. And I really do think that the fertility journey is often one of healing. We got to, you know, we got to sort of, not that we drum up old traumas for fun, but like sometimes these things get reactivated and it's like, okay, well, it's not your fault, but it's your responsibility. We got to figure out how to deal with it. And I think the best way is in sort of a loving network of support. Oh, boy. <laughs> That's so, I, there's so much there to unpack, but I just want to say that I, I frequently tell patients, you thought you were here for a baby, but you, you've gotten wisdom. Right? You that's, know? That's, uh, that is so true. That is absolutely so true. Yeah. Well, that, that's amazing. And, and one more thing I want to hit on. Um, there's an expression in science, especially like theoretical physics and all this kind of stuff, that science progresses one funeral at a time. Mm. It's kind of cold, but it means there's these old ways of thinking. They're not going to change their mind. And the only That's way right. to get past. That's right. I don't want to bring up, I don't want to make fun of string theory or any of these theories that seem to be falling on their face. But it, it seems that people are so ingrained in their thoughts that they're not willing to change. And this calories in, calories out mindset that is yeah. still preached uh, by, a, I'm not, I don't want to single out any particular profession, but there's still yeah. people out there that have not gotten on the scientific bandwagon that, uh, our previous thoughts of uh, what controlled weight and whatnot, uh, yeah. uh, that they might be wrong. And, yeah, and there, I mean, I think there evolve. may be a role for GLP ones. I mean, that's a whole other conversation that, you know, that, that yeah. really many people do need medications to change the set point and to, you know, to do all those things. But I think even if we look to nature, I mean, nature truly has to die to then come back alive, right? I mean, yeah. I live in this very cold climate. I look at the trees right now, there's nothing on them. They are, you know, they're, they're, they're gone. Right. And then and then the buds will come. But it's like, you know, that dying to self, we have to die to self if we're going to be able to receive what's next and better for us. Yeah. The phoenix bird goes way, way back past the Greeks. It goes way, right. way back. That's right. Incredible. Well, that's a wonderful, uh, I think, overview of the subject, Erica. We shouldn't beat ourselves up. We should find professionals who can help us. Yep. Uh, consistency is the name of the game. Yeah. And uh Gentleness. Once again, we take it one day at a time and not beat ourselves up. That's right. Well, Erica, thank you so much for your wisdom and your wonderful thoughts on this sensitive topic. Thank you, Gil. I really appreciate talking with you about this. <laughs>